Hi, right, so today I'm making granary bread cakes. Um, I've put all my ingredients in my bread maker. Um, so that puts a bit of the work out for me. Um, so now I'm going to put some flour on my table. I'm going to put my dough down. I'm going to get the paddle out that was in my bread maker. And for this recipe, I've used 500 grams or 1.2 pounds of granary flour. I've used one and a half teaspoons of yeast, dried yeast, fast action dried yeast, and one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. I've used two teaspoons of black of molasses sugar. So that's dark brown molasses sugar. And I've used an ounce of butter. Nine fluid ounces of warm, well, tepid water. And put them all in my bread maker in the order that I'm supposed to do. And I've let it mix the other ingredients together for me and rise it for the first rising which takes about one and a half hours altogether. So half an hour for the kneading and an hour for the rising. So then I've took it out of my bread maker. I've knocked it back. And now I'm kneading it again for another five to 10 minutes. I've prepared my trays i've got two trays that i've prepared with grease proof paper and i've also sprinkled them with bread flour so that's one tray and i've got another small tray um i know when i make when i use 500 grams of bread flour and it has to either if you're doing white it has to be strong bread flour otherwise i've got granary um, I like to put, um, like I said, I put brown molasses sugar in this or I like to use um, a couple of teaspoons of black treacle. So that gives it um, a sweet flavour, gives it a nice nutty sweet flavour. Also gives it a nice crust too. So now um, I'm knocking this back and what I need to do is knock it back so it's pliable wasn't actually too sticky today. Sometimes I think I get my ingredients slightly different, obviously made by hand, so you, you don't always weigh them out exactly the same, but you need to try to do it as accurate as possible, because if you do it, you don't get the right end result. Um, uh, another tip is make sure when you're using the fast action dried yeast, which is what I use, and that's this one. So it's um, easy bake and it's dried. Keep it in the fridge when you're not using it. Uh, and then when you need to use it, you need to take it out about 30 to 45 minutes before you want to make your bread. So take out the tin and measure the amount that you need obviously in this case one and a half teaspoons of the yeast and I put it in a little container and I leave it at room temperature for half an hour um, before I make my bread um, and uh, obviously your, your water needs to be warm needs to be tepid so that it gives the yeast a chance to work as well you can use normal wet yeast and activate it if you like in water, warm water first, but 
I do. Um, I've always used um, dried fast action yeast. Um, and you can also do this by hand. You can do the um, mixing of your ingredients by hand if you like. Um, put them all in a bowl, obviously, and mix them together, bring them all together. Um, and then put them in a bowl, a greased bowl, with a cling film over it or a tea towel over it and leave it to rise for an hour and it should double in size. Um, depending on how warm it is, if it's summer, if it's winter, obviously it'll take a little bit longer to rise, but they should rise to about double in size. It should rise to about double in size. And then you know that it's ready. So we're doing the second knock back and knead now. Um, and I know that with 500 grams of flour, I will get eight or nine bread cakes. Can make a loaf if you like, so um, you can either leave it in your bread maker um, and let it make a loaf. Or I like to make bread cakes because I can put them in the freezer and um, then you can just get them out when you need a bread cake and just defrost them in the microwave so that you've got them nice and fresh every time you want to use them. Um, I just find that easier than having a loaf and you'd probably have to cut it, I suppose, before you put it in the freezer so that um, you would uh, have a slice uh, when you need it. Otherwise, you just have to use it all at once, don't you? You can't really keep it in the freezer. So I think it's a good idea if you're making bread cakes so that you can just get one out when you need one. So mine's needed now. I've been doing that for about five to 10 minutes now, about seven minutes. So um, it should be okay now. It's quite pliable. I don't do all this testing where you, you get a piece of the dough and hold it up and see if it's see-through. And I don't bother with stuff like that. Um, I just tend to know when my dough's ready and it feels nice and pliable and uh, not too sticky to handle. So that's how I do. Done now. Kneaded, knocked back and kneaded. So then I'm going to divide this now. And I know that I usually get about eight or nine, like I said, bread cakes. So it's up to you. You can either just guess because obviously, like I said, they're handmade, so they don't have to be perfect. So I'm just rolling the, um, the dough now. Um, and I've invested in a, a bread scraper cutter. So I've got my scales. And what I'll do is um, I'll weigh my bread out. Obviously, it don't want to work, so turn it off and back on. So, uh, if I do it in pounds and ounces, I usually get my bread cakes are usually about three, just over three ounces each. So, Three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven, eight. So I've done eight bread cakes and I weighed them out and they're all about 3.5 ounces thereabouts. Doesn't really matter if they're not all the same. Like I said, they're handmade, so they don't all have to be the same. I just like them to be near each other, as I can. I've got three, about 3.5, 3.6 ounces for these bread cakes. 3.4, so we'll make that a little bit bigger. 3.5. So, just about right now. Like I said, doesn't have to be perfect. Handmade. I'm not on a production line. So there, I've got my eight bread cakes now. So now, just take your bread cake and fold it in on itself. You can see, just pull the ends in of the bread cake. So this is making it into a little round. And pull it up, pull it up, and then take it in the hand and just make it into a little ball. Roll it on your table if you like, just to make it smooth and even. That's a little round. That's one. You can, if you like, um, you can leave them round if you want. Then you'll have little bread rolls, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I want bread cakes, obviously, so some of the grains come out of your bread, so just make sure you get them back in. So just pull it up again, like that. Make it into a round on your table. That's it. It's around again. Tray, on my tray. Again, pull it up, pull the sides in, pull it in, make it into a round, pull it up into your hand. That. If your dough is a little bit sticky, then just use a little bit of extra flour on your table so they don't stick to your hands as much. Number three, again, pull it up, like that, making it a little round, again, in your hand, roll it, and that's number four, on my tray, make sure when you put them on your tray, that you spread them out a little bit, um, so it allows for, for rising. Although it doesn't really matter if they touch, because you just obviously tear them apart when they're cut. So these are gonna go on my baking tray, and they're gonna go on there for about an hour. You see, they're still they're starting to rise again already after I've cut them, so you need to do this and shape them into whatever you're doing um, fairly quickly so that you can get them on the tray and get them, leave them to rise again. Do a double rising. Uh, it's quite good to do a double rising because Obviously, the yeast's not as active after you've cooked it, so better for your stomach if it's double risen. 
That's number six. That's the last two to do. I'm putting these on a separate tray. Depending on how big you want them, um, you can obviously gauge how big you'd like them. Once you've baked, when you've baked them once, you'll see how big they are when they double in size, when they expand, obviously, and the second rising, and see what they're like when they've cooked. So I just need my second tray. Put my flour on there. Got a little bit more on, so I've got two on that tray. On there, and this is my last one. So again, pulling it up from the sides into the middle. You can see, just pulling it up. Pulling it up and making it into a little round. Then roll it on your table and your work surface and just smooth it out. And again, there it is. And that goes on your flower tray. So now I've got them on my flower tray. I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour on my hands and just push them down and make them into your bread cake shape. You can make these, you can make different shapes. You can do them into little uh, baguettes if you like by rolling them into little sausages and putting them on your tray and letting them rise. Or if you just leave them and don't squash them down, then you'll have little bread rolls instead of bread cakes. So that's those done. My other tray, there again, a bit of flour, push them down on my tray. There we go. Pushing them down. And when we've done this, we're going to cover it with cling film. I'm going to sprinkle them with flour, with a bread flour, and that will stop number one, the cling film from sticking to it. Um, if you want, you can put them with the, on the tray in a plastic bag. If you've got a big enough plus clean plastic bag, you can do that and put them in that. It's just so that they don't get a, a crust on them, the skin on them when you're leaving them to rise. So those are my bread cakes now, squashed out now, so they're into bread cakes. So I'm just going to sprinkle them with bread flour. That will help to have a nice, Soft crust, softy crust. That's one. And my other. So those are my eight bread cakes. And my tray. Then I'm just going to get my cling fill. my cling film and I'm just going to cover my stone now. Enough to cover my tree. So just cover it over. Doesn't have to be tight. All it's doing is um, just keeping the air from them so they don't dry out. 
And that's one done. It's covered. And you don't need to put these in an airing cupboard. You don't need to put them anywhere warm. You don't need to put them in a warm oven. You just leave them on your table. Okay, I do. And they will rise. Second one. So now they will stay on that tray now for an hour. Should take about an hour. Sometimes when it's a little bit cooler, like I say, in your winter months, it might take a little bit longer. So it might take an hour and a half. But they will double in size. And when they've doubled in size, then you can cook them. So you see how I've spaced them apart so they've got a little bit of room to rise so that's done now so we just leave them now to rise like i say for an hour an hour and a half and then i'll come back um and i'll show you about cooking them um when they have risen they will go in the oven uh on 200 and um, that's electric um 200 I'm not exactly sure what the gas mark is um and i cook them or 10, 15, 10 to 15 minutes, um, depending on how dark a crust you want. Um, so I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> 